Hi, I'm Jackson Bird, and today I want to talk about trans people sharing pre-transition photos of themselves, and how I feel about that for myself, and with regards to the larger movement. Before we get started, just a quick disclaimer that I am speaking from my own opinion here. It's informed by conversations I've had with a diverse array of other trans people, but at the end of the day, I am one single trans guy, and I do not speak for the entire community. Every trans person has the right to feel however they feel about this. Do not take my feelings as a royal decree of how all trans people do or should feel. Cool? Good. So when the 10 year challenge rolled around at the end of last year, when people were posting a bunch of photos of themselves like now and 10 years ago to mark the end of the decade, I posted this on Twitter. I said, I am a hopeless sentimentalist, so I would love to share something like my favorite videos I made over the last decade or what I looked like in 2010 compared to now. But the further I get into my transition, the more uncomfortable I am with people seeing me pre-transition. And then I acknowledged that yes, I did just publish a book filled with childhood and pre-transition photos of myself. It's complicated. And I said I was gonna make a video about it soon, so here is that video. And I wanna begin by talking about how my feelings on the matter have evolved over the years. So early on in my transition, I thought that I would be the type of person who is okay with his childhood and pre-transition photos being shared. Like I said in the tweet, I am stupidly sentimental. I'm huge on documenting stuff obviously. And dysphoria aside, like there were a lot of parts of growing up that I actually liked that I might want to share with people. I wasn't then and mostly am not now the type of person who thinks of my pre-transition self as a whole other person or as someone who's now dead. And a lot of people do, and that is a totally valid way to think about yourself. It's just not my sense of self. So overall, early on, I thought that sharing past photos would be a way of honoring my past and that it wouldn't really bother me because at the time, it didn't. As time has gone on, however, as I've gotten further away from the initial phase of transition, you know, as I look further and further removed from how I used to, and as less and less people remember or even ever knew what I looked like then, it gets harder and harder for me to stomach people seeing those photos of me. I think part of it is that when I first came out, it was publicly on YouTube and to an extended professional network. Like my birth name was everywhere. My pre-transition face was plastered everywhere. I didn't think I was ever going to have the privilege to hide those things. People were always going to be able to find them. So I didn't think it was worth fighting it. But then a few years ago, something happened. A friend and professional acquaintance of mine who at that point had known me for a while and was very familiar with all of my videos and other work saw a presentation I did in which I shared footage of me before transitioning and even included my birth name. And he told me afterwards that he had no idea before that what my birth name was or what I looked like before I transitioned. I was surprised because I just assumed that everyone, even people I met since starting transition was aware of that stuff, you know, had maybe been able to find it, maybe even sought it out if they didn't just stumble on it. I hadn't even tried to hide it because I assumed there was no point. But in that moment, I realized that Maybe I could. There was a chance that I could not completely hide it, but obscure it, you know, avoid it, or at least stop publicizing it myself. The possibility that some people might forget or had never known was kind of incredible. You know, even if people could pretty easily go look it up, knowing that a lot of people didn't, and that I was increasingly getting comments from people saying they forgot I was trans or they forgot what I looked like before, all of that made me want to try to keep it hidden even more. You know, it was kind of like I hadn't thought that that would ever happen, so I just gave up from the very beginning. But now that there was hope, I wanted to try it. And then my book came along. So the original manuscript of my book, 75 pages of it at least, was a zine that I wrote years ago, back when I still believed it was hopeless to hide pre-transition photos, and when I still felt more comfortable sharing them, especially because the zine was originally released to a limited audience, not like the whole freaking world and published by a major publisher and stuff. So childhood and teenage pictures were a part of the zine, and when it came time to turn it into a book, I didn't really think twice about including the same pictures that I had in the zine. Here and there, I resisted certain ones that I didn't want included, but it wasn't until close to the end of the editing process that I had second thoughts about including them. And not so much because of how I felt personally personally, but because of what kind of message I was sending about trans people sharing photos in general. And these days, trans Instagram and trans Twitter and trans YouTube are flooded with timeline photos and all kinds of comparison shots of people at various points in transition and, you know, very often pre-transition versus 
wherever someone is at now. And in a lot of ways, it's awesome. But not every trans person is cool with sharing those kinds of photos of themselves. And there's an argument to be made that when some trans people do it, it creates an expectation that all trans people are okay with sharing pre-transition photos. It can embolden cisgender people to request that of us without realizing that for some people, it might be an invasive, painful or even dangerous request. You know, for me, I sometimes worry that when someone sees a photo of me before I started transition, it changes their entire concept of who I am. Like even if they knew that I was trans, they might've only ever viewed me rightfully as the man that I am. But then when they see that photo, they could be the best of allies, but it could still on some level like change how they perceive me. It's something burned in their brain that makes me different in a way that you know, sometimes I'm okay with, but often, makes me feel uncomfortable or even embarrassed. And it's just complicated. Like, you know, it adds baggage to everything. You know, if I wanted to share a photo of me from 10 years ago or from childhood and in that photo, I'm visibly presenting as a girl, then it's no longer just a post about this fun photo from childhood. There's a whole other unspoken layer about me being trans. And sometimes I say, screw it, you know? Some people have childhoods that look different than others. It shouldn't matter. But other times I am weighed down by the types of reactions that I know it will inevitably elicit if I post it. And for a lot of trans people, it can be worse. Seeing these photos could trigger really intense feelings about a dark time in their lives. Someone sharing these photos without their consent could out them in ways that threaten their safety or livelihood. And to a larger extent, sharing comparison photos can tend to emphasize the physical side of transition. You know, it can add to the sensationalizing of the medical transformations that we undergo and downplay the emotional, mental, social, and personal sides of transition. And because a lot of the comparison photos that get shared around the most, either by the mainstream media or the algorithms, tend to be the most drastic changes, and more often than not of white, thin, able-bodied people, it pushes forward the misconception that there's only one way to be trans. It erases so many other trans people out there and can lead to trans people whose bodies might react differently to medical transition to lose hope or feel more dysphoric. Now, I say all of this, but if you totally disagree, do not give up on me just yet because in true Jackson Bird form, I will slightly contradict a lot of what I just said in a moment. But to back up even more, trans folks in the 80s and 90s did a ton of work to stop the mainstream media from requesting pre-transition photos or sharing them without their consent. I've talked to some of those older trans people about how shocked they are by current trends of trans people themselves sharing these photos online, when it's something they very deeply felt should be kept hidden. And I can get that, you know, seeing another generation doing the exact opposite of something that you worked so hard for has got to be difficult and sort of confusing. Though I would argue that it's not the exact opposite of what they worked to get rid of. You know, it's not other parties sharing these photos without our eager consent. It's us sharing the photos of our own volition. Though, again, yes, us doing that can send an implicit message that's okay for third parties to request them, but still. I think there are a number of reasons why trans people today might want to share these photos. The first, is not a reason that I love, but I think it's honestly a big factor and one that I have absolutely fallen for before. And it is that pre-transition comparison photos are a kind of content that gets a lot of clicks. The few times I've posted comparison photos, they have gotten a huge amount of likes compared to my average post. I mean, heck, the most viewed video on my channel is one of the few in which I have deigned to include a pre-transition photo in the thumbnail. If your goal is high engagement on social media, it works. Personally, I sometimes feel a little almost like self-exploitive in knowing that sharing something super vulnerable and personal is my ticket to good analytics, but I do get it. Another reason I think we're seeing more trans people sharing their pre-transition photos, and this applies more to the younger generation, but I think there's a desire to reclaim agency. For those of us who transitioned in the age of social media, it is a lot harder to wipe the record clean of our past names and old looks. Our data prints are everywhere. It's not just asking our parents to take down the baby photos from the walls at their house, a lot of Gen Z have had their photos non-consensually shared by their parents online since they were born. I think a lot of people share that sense of inevitability that I felt early on in my transition. The sense that people are gonna find it no matter what, so I might as well share it on my own terms. I think that makes a lot of sense, and I cannot fault anyone for feeling that way. But the final reason that I think some trans people share comparison photos and timeline slideshows is because even now, 
We all know what it's like to have felt a lack of representation and how powerful it was when we finally found that representation, whether it was a book or a TV show or more likely a YouTube video or Instagram post in which we finally saw someone like us. Not just that they were trans, but that there was some detail about them that we connected with and could see ourselves in. Someone whose similarities to ourselves was close enough to give us hope about our lives. For me, it was watching those timeline videos on YouTube, finding someone who looked physically similar to me pre-transition and seeing how hormones physically changed them into the kind of guy I dreamt I could look like. It's one thing to see a trans person who's already been through various points of transition feeling great and comfortable in their body, but it's a whole other to see how they got there. Because I, I know for me, like I could see those men and think, well, they probably looked more masculine than me before they even started transitioning. There's no hope for me. But when I saw guys that looked like I did, scrawny with soft features and a super high voice, and then saw how they changed over the years, I was finally able to believe that transitioning could actually work for me, could actually help my dysphoria and lead to a happy, fulfilled life. It gave me hope. And maybe just as importantly, it gave me realistic expectations about the speed and variance from person to person of physical transition. And even if a lot of the photos that get shared around the most might be of that white, thin, able-bodied type of person I mentioned before, social media has given way more people a chance to share their stories, and we are seeing way more people of color and disabled people and people with all types of bodies and genders and types of transitions getting their stories out there and their photos out there and giving other people hope. We're getting to change the narrative on what the mainstream media for decades has said what it means to be trans. Some of those possible consequences of sharing photos I mentioned earlier, by sharing our photos on our own terms and making sure that more marginalized people get a platform, we're helping to make those consequences irrelevant, at least, you know, a little bit, slowly, over time, maybe. <laughs> but in that way, I do think that sharing pre-transition photos or timeline slideshows is a super important resource for fellow trans and questioning people. Unfortunately, sharing them publicly so that they can be accessible to anyone who might need to see them does mean that cis people will see them as well. And despite all the wonderful allies out there, that could mean bigots commenting with hateful language. It could mean some cis people getting the idea that all trans people are comfortable sharing those photos or that they have a right to request them of us. And those are real dangers that I think we all need to consider when we post vulnerable parts of our lives publicly. But my optimistic take is that cis people will receive these types of photos and videos graciously without demanding them and use them to see just how many different ways there are to be trans and to transition and how many different types of trans people there are out there with various intersecting identities and use those representations to break down some of the stereotypes they might hold. Not to mention how all of that can also be done for trans people who need to see that representation. But all of that said, how do I feel about sharing my pre-transition photos? It's an evolving feeling. I've changed very much how I feel about it in the five years that I've been public about my transition, and I'm sure I'll change more in the future. It also changes on a case-by-case -case basis for me. But the one thing I do know is that I reserve the right to say no if someone asks to see them, and that so long as something is on my terms, I'm okay with it. And I hope that if any of you out there feel some discomfort with it, some or all of the time, you also feel the confidence and the security to say no. And if someone in your life doesn't get it, maybe show them this video. It's very long, and again, it's just my singular perspective, but maybe it'll help them get a little bit of insight. And for any trans people who are watching, how do you feel about all of this? Did you post anything for the 10 year challenge at the end of the year? Let me know in the comments. And to everyone, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.